This episode's random word is. Kimoi. Meaning gross or slimy in a slang type way of being spoken. If you wanted to use a kimoi in a formal way, you can simply put des after kimoi. Kimoi des. Kimoi des. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this first film breakdown episode of the Japan Podcast. Now, the reason why we're recording this episode specifically is in the original film edit, I actually had all these word for word breakdowns in there, but the edit came to about 10 minutes, and I don't want to have a 10 minute long video because that's pretty long for you guys to sit there and watch it. So, I wanted to keep the film short, still expose you, and teach you the terms. But、uh, it's much easier to be on the go and listen to the word for word breakdowns rather than at your computer. So I hope you enjoy this breakdown. I have the, one of the stars of the show, Chisa, with me here to help give all the breakdowns. So let's get started by listening to the first line of this film, and then we'll take it to the, the slower spoken version and go word for word and break it down so you can understand each term. Here's the first line. Excuse me, where's the bus stop? Bus stop is there, so it's about two minutes. So there you just heard the first line of the film in the full speed version. So now let's move on and listen to the slowed down version with the breakdown from the film, and then we'll go even deeper into the word for word here. So here is the slowed down version. Bus stop is there. Meaning, the bus stop is over there. So that was the explanation from the film that you just heard. Now we're gonna go deeper and take this word for word in order of the sentence. Before we get started on this word for word translation, just keep in mind that the order of the words in the Japanese sentence versus the English translation it is gonna be different. And that's just simply due to the Japanese language having a different sentence structure. We'll cover this more in grammar lessons. But let's just get into this sentence and go word for word now. So the first word in this sentence. Basute. Bus stop. The next is the particle wa. Is. And then after that, asoko des. Over there. And now asoko is over there. The des is just the,、uh, the word ender for formality, is that? Yes. Perfect. I think asoko、mm-hmm. is also there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it could be over there or there, whichever. Right, and that's kind of in the whole family of like kore, sore, and yeah, are. Are.、Mm-hmm. And asoko. But asoko is to be used to point to where the object is. Right. And just for those who don't know, what is sore? Sore? Mm hmm. Like sore. That. Wa- that. Yes. Okay. And kore? This. This. And are? That. That? Oh,、yeah. I guess sore and are are both meaning that, right? I think so. Yeah, the difference sore. would be sore is closer. Yeah. And are is really far away. Yeah. Like pointing to in the distance. Yeah, I think that there's a different degree between sore, kore, are. Kore is the closest one. Sore is medium. Are is farthest. Perfect. I think. Yes. But asoko is used to explain where things are. Oh, I see.、Yeah. So it's more of a directional. Yeah.、Uh, That's、gotcha. why in that case it was used to asoko、okay. rather than are. Perfect. And going back to the wa particle, that is meaning is, and that's just to connect bus stop is. Over there. Yes. So now let's move on to the next part of this sentence. Just a two minute walk. And what does the first word in that sentence mean? By walk. Next up we have. And what does that mean? Two minute. Two minute. Okay, so there's, there's two words in there. Nihun. So, ni, from my understanding, that is two. Yes. Hun is minute. And des, of course, is just our ender. Ender, yeah, formal. 
ender. So if you wanted to say like one minute, it would just be. Ippun des. Ippun des. All right. So just whenever you add pun to the. Is it hun? Actually, pun or hun depends on number. Gotcha. Okay. That's a complicated thing. But like once you memorize it, it's totally okay. If you just accidentally say it, ichi hun, people would understand it. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's we... just harder to say, like, ippun is shorter than ichi hun, right? Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. We kind of covered that in our basic counting yeah. casual talk there a while ago. Okay. Well, now that we have that covered, let's move on to the next sentence. Oh, really? Hi, now, before we go on to the broken down version, just want to say that is a very long sentence, so don't feel overwhelmed quite just yet. We will break this down now so you can understand each piece. Meaning, yes, three blocks away from here. All right, so that was the first part that we're going to start breaking down. So, Chisa, the first part of this, so this starts off nice and easy. Hi means yes. Simple. Hi. Hi. And then next is Mitsume. Mitsume is third. Okay. Mitsu is how you count object. But when you put me after Mitsu, it turns out third. Right. This one's kind of a cool one. So instead of counting one, two, three, you could just add me to the end of one, to the end of two. It would just be first, second, or third. Yes, exactly. And then the particle no. How is that connected in this sentence? Before going to explain what no means, maybe we, you can help what kado means. Kado just means corner. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference here is we in English, we don't really say when asking for direction. It's three corners away from here. In Japanese, they say corners rather than blocks. So instead of saying it's three blocks away from here, they would say corner. So don't get confused by that when asking for directions. So now that we know kado means corner and mitsume means the third corner, together. No. The particle no. How is that helping these words combine? Whenever you specify object with numbers uh, by telling uh, uh, where it is by number, by the order, then you, you need to put no between the object and number. For example, um, at the third corner, it needs, to, it needs to have no between third and corner which is mitsume and kado. Yeah, just for me trying to understand it right now is um, if you wanted to say pick up the second book, you would say um, second no book? Yes. Okay, so it's the second book. So, and yeah, it's basically anything. It's the first hat, the second hat, the third computer. You would always just add the particle no to connect the object to the order in this instance, it's the same as in the corner. We we're saying the third corner. So we had to use the particle no to connect this number relates to this object. If we just had to translate it straightforward, that would mean the corner of the third, which doesn't really make sense. But just as Kyle said, remember, put no between number and object that you, you want to point out. Perfect. That makes sense. There's a formula there. Yes. Just remember no, but don't get distracted by no. Be more cautious about which number and then with what object people are talking about. Yes. And look at this. I think we have another particle here. After kado, there was? Wo. It's also another particle. So many particles there. Mm -hmm. But in that case, wo means at. But in Japanese, at the corner of the third. That's what it is, at the corner of the third. Yeah, when I was trying to piece this together, it's like the wo particle by itself, it simply just marks the object of the sentence. I imagine so, it's like as it was placed after kado, the corner, it just marks the corner as the object 
of that part of the sentence. Like that is the main focus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of this sentence, which is. Please turn right. So, Chisa, why don't we take this from the top? Migi. Right. Just out of curiosity, what is left? Hidari. Hidari. So, hidari is left and migi would be right. And next up, we have the particle ni. Ni is、uh, just a particle in that case, two. So, to right. Okay. So, to the right. Please turn to the right. Okay. To the right. Gotcha. Yeah. And then we have magate kudasai, which is actually two words together. Isn't that correct? Because kudasai yeah, is. Yeah, kind of. So, how does that work? Please turn. Gotcha. So, from my understanding, magate means turn. Yes. And then kudasai always means please. Yes. And I've heard that word a lot spoken in Japanese. The kudasai is added in many different phrases.、Mm-hmm. So I guess whenever you hear someone say kudasai, they're trying to be polite and saying please. Yes. Please do. Please something. So in that case, please turn. All right. And now let's listen to the next line of this. So Then on your left side. So the first word in this part of the sentence was. Soshitara? Yes, soshitara means then. The next part is hidari gawa. On the left side. Now, this is another kind of cool ending that you can tie on to your words here. Because hidari, what we just kind of talked about, was left. Yes. And then gawa, what is gawa all about? The side. Side, okay. So, I could say migi gawa. Yes, means right side. Awesome. And then another particle we have here hidari gawa, ni. Ni means at. And next we have the final part of this sentence. You will see the bus stop. We already know the first part. Baste is bus stop. Perfect. And then another particle, ga. Oh, I think baste will be there. So, in that case, ga could be will be. So, basto will be, and will be part in Japanese is ga. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because the ga particle, like just by itself, it basically specifies the subject of the sentence, which in this case is the bus stop. You、yeah. will see. It's an interesting sentence. You might notice that there's actually omission here in English. Baste ga miemasu yo. Did you notice that who is、uh, seeing, who is finding the bus stop? You, right? So you in the English part is omitted. Did you notice? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. In Japanese,、uh, subject. Isn't very important. Like you can actually omit subject anytime. For example, when you say, I'll go to somewhere, you don't actually have to say I, you can only say, go to somewhere. And then people understand who is actually going to that somewhere. So in that case, baste ga miemasu yo means you'll see the bus stop. But actually, you is omitted.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was reading about omissions and how you,、uh, in the Japanese language they do take that out quite a bit, and I'm still not fully used to that. So、um, here it is, an example there, right there for you. Yeah, it's a lazy language sometimes, I guess.、Hmm. What about、uh, mie masu yo? Mie masu yo means we'll see. Okay. Yeah, so as you notice, Actually, the object comes before the verb, which is different from English. In English, you'll say, see the bus stop, which is the verb comes first and object comes later.、Mm. But it actually goes backward, and then bus stop comes first, and then the verb comes after to explain. Gotcha. To finish the sentence. There you go. All right. Well, I'm glad we made it through all of that one. <laughs> that was quite the, quite the response there. Yeah. 
I think the point is we just. I think in that case, like in this podcast, the mainly what we should focus on is、uh, we pick up the word vocabularies. Right. Rather than understanding a whole structure of、uh, grammar. Right. Yeah, that's a whole different topic on its own. And then if you go into learning grammar, knowing some sort of vocabulary, like having a bank of terms in your mind, then you have something to work with. Exactly. Like, yeah. And、grammar. it's always nice to sorry. It's always nice to 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 be used to listening, right? Exactly. Yeah. If even if you half understand these grammatical things that we're explaining here, then when you go to learn them specifically, you'll already have somewhat of an idea. All right. And the next one here, your last response in the video was. Thank you very much. Ie, do itashimashite. Meaning. Simply, no problem. That's pretty easy, and then very useful things to know, I guess. So e、yeah. means no. Do itashimashite means you are welcome. But in that case, it just doesn't only mean no. You're welcome. Oh yeah, it makes sense. So here、yeah. you go. Yeah, that that makes sense. A lot of people. Would say no, you're welcome. That's fine.、Um, but then you you might see it translated a lot to being just simply no problem. Yeah, so that's same things.、Mm-hmm. But in Japanese, it might sound longer. But we would say, "Ie, do itashimashite." No problem. Yeah, but there's actually one easier way to say. You could also say, "Ie, domo." Oh, really? Yeah, that sounds still formal.、Mm. Yeah, simple and shorter. There you go. Yeah. So if you just、uh, wanted to say, "Oh, no problem," or "No, you're welcome," but you forgot how to say "do itashimashite," which is a little long, you could just simply say "ie domo" and a bow.、There、People will appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> how common is bowing, by the way? Oh, just so much. Like、uh, we don't know how many times we bow, but you don't bow bow to. Friends or family,、mm-hmm. maybe you do that like in a funny way, but、yeah. just pretty much like、uh, if you see、uh, people first time,、mm-hmm. you pretty much bow, and then when you leave the people, you bow. Okay. Yeah, it's just like、uh, to show how, like, to show our respect. Right. It's funny too, because when you just hear about bowing, we're saying like hello, bow, say goodbye, bow, say thank you, bow. It sounds like it's、yeah. so much. But when you're actually in Japan around people and you see it, you just feel like it's naturally. It just happens. I、yeah. don't think about it. I always find myself bowing when I say hello, or and I don't have to think about it. It just is natural in that environment.、Somehow. Yeah, actually, I think bowing shows how humble you are, and then being humble is one of the most beautiful attitude in Japan. Yeah, well, no one really likes very arrogant people, right? So <laughs> that's, <true. laughs> that's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Well, we've covered all the responses from this film now. The next ones are very easy. They are the actual questions from the other star of the film, and that was just asking. Let's listen to the first one. This was the first question that you might need to use in Japan. Excuse me. Where's the bus stop? All right. And the first question was, "Excuse me, where is the bus stop?" And in Japanese, this one was, "Sumimasen, basu te wa doko desu ka?" Yeah, that's correct. And now the first word of this sentence, "Sumimasen," is "Excuse me." Simple enough. You'll hear that a lot spoken in Japanese. Yeah. Sumimasen, sumimasen. Trying to get、oh, yeah. someone's attention. <laughs> sumimasen also means I'm sorry. Too. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could you could say, "Oh, I'm sorry, but where's bus stop?" Right. So、mm-hmm. same things, but you could say, "Um, sumimasen a lot." Okay. Yes,、yeah, so、it's very useful to know. Yeah, we bump into someone, or if you're trying to get their attention.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, bus date. We've covered that plenty. Bus stop. <laughs> And wa. We actually cover that. Is in that case too same as the bus stop is over there. Exactly. Bus stop is over there. Right. It's marking that. Yeah. Topic there.、Um, okay. And then the last one is new. Doko desu ka? Yeah, doko. 
doko means where. And then deska. This is a formal ender, but when you put ka after this, it makes a question. Right. So where something. Where. Where is the question?、Like、yeah. Where, where is. Where. Where and the question. Mm hmm. So, yeah, it's yeah. simple. It's simple. actually even simpler than English. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, basically, anytime you add ka to the end, you're just making that、mm-hmm. as a question.、Uh, can I just、uh, say、oh, one、yeah. thing? Yes, please. Okay. So, when you say baste wa doko desu ka, please remember the object you are looking for comes first before you saying where, which is different from English. In English, we start from where and then object you're looking for comes after. For example, ah,、um, where is the fan? Yeah, right. So the fan comes later. But in Japanese, if you want, are looking for the fan, you have to go by the fan. Where is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so otherwise, it might sound a little bit. Funny. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Well, that's good to know. That's, I'm glad you pointed that out because that's very important. It's good to practice too. Mm hmm. Okay. And up next, we simply have So desu ka? Which means. Oh, really? Actually, this is, I'm glad this came up because we just said Doko desu ka? And then you'll just realize we have So desu ka? Which means, oh, really? Question mark. Right. So it's like you're shocked. Like, hmm,、yes. okay. Or like, is that so? Yeah. So whenever you are kind of questioning, you always put ka in the end and then it makes it sound that you are questioning. Perfect. Well, that's glad. I'm glad that came up because that is two examples right there. And moving on to the last response from the other character there. This is a, another most famous one in Japanese. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Oh, you know, right? Do I? I think so. Well, let me think. Thank you very much. De- That's correct. Yay! <laughs> That's so cheesy. Okay, I- let's move on. Okay,、um, we got it. So, arigato gozaimasu, meaning thank you very much. That's pretty much it. That's May all. May I the... stop it? Sorry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. But, arigato gozaimasu is just thank you. If you wanted to say very much as well, honto <laughs> ni. Yeah, so like、uh, if you wanted to say thank you very much, honto ni arigato gozaimasu. Okay. It's the correct version. Honto ni. Truly thank you. All right. I think that's how, how it works. Honto could also mean really too. Okay. Honto ni. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Honto ni. I, actually, you know, like honto ni means true. So, honto ni. Is, is it true?、Mm-hmm. Like with a kind of like surprise. So, it's kind of like so this guy. Yeah. Okay. So, this guy is, is that true too?、Mm. Okay. So, arigato gozaimasu is just thank you. And honto arigato gozaimasu. Oh, there is actually one more article,、uh, particle, me.、Okay. So, honto ni. Right. Arigato gozaimasu. Okay. It's the correct version. Honto ni arigato gozaimasu. But if you forgot to put, you, if you forgot which particle you have to put after honto, you can pause after saying honto and then can say arigato after <laughs> saying. And then that sounds. Totally correct too. Oh, so there's a good way to cheat there. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, if you don't remember, you can say, Honto, arigato gozaimasu. With an emotional, like, feeling. <laughs> gotcha.、Yeah. And a bow. And yeah, a bow. yeah, yeah. Bow, bow. <laughs> don't look at, like, people's eyes, just bow and then look at the ground. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all the terms from that first Japan film that we had. So, I hope you all actually watched the film and enjoyed it. And if you're just listening to this podcast before you have seen it,、uh, jump over to our YouTube channel and check it out. It's only about four minutes. Yeah, we tried to make it an entertaining, fun way to just relax and watch something and pick up a few phrases along the way. 
And now, if you have watched it, now that you've listened to this breakdown, go ahead and watch it once more, and you probably don't need to read the subtitles now, because you should have a basic understanding of these words and terms and how they work together. And like always, honto ni arigato gozaimasu. Honto ni arigato gozaimashita. Oh, mashita. Past version. Gotcha. And a bow. <laughs> and bow. <laughs> Too bad you can't see our bowing. I'll add a sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. Well, thanks everyone for listening to this episode, and I look forward to making the next film and the next breakdown for you. Stay tuned for much more lessons and courses coming out, and、uh, we'll talk to you soon. Arigatou gozaimashita. Arigatou gozaimasu.